Greetings, I'm Rob Chapman. And I'm the captain. 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 And we got Reverend. Reverend. <laughs> I really need this coffee. Okay, do More it. More than you could ever imagine. More than you could ever imagine. It's Jet Lag Monday. Uh, <clears throat> where you know Rob what? flies back from some far-flung land in a different time zone. <clears throat> and uh, and I just feel like I do every Monday morning. And if we get any <laughs> if we get any trolling for my, my state of disrepair mentally, we're going to call the GOP. We're going to call the Guitar Online Police. <laughs> call the GOPs. GOP. GOP. Uh, California Highway Police. No, that would be chips. Guitar Online mm. Police as well. Oh, sorry. Um, Excuse me, see what you trolling? No! Reverend. Reverend Guitars, uh, made in the... Well, not made in. Uh, designed in uh, America. America! Uh, made in Korea. Sent back to America again for them to QC and do, and then sent to retailers for your delight. Uh, it's got some new guitars that we uh, stumbled across at the NAMM show in January, and they arrived in Andertons this week, so I thought, hmm... Ooh, like a Skeksis from the Dark noise. Crystal. Mm. Um, so the first one is called uh, a dirt bike. Really? Uh, yes, uh, it is. Um, is that a euphemism? I don't believe it is. No, I think it is actually. Uh, it's it's a Reeves Gabrell. I can't even say his name. Reeves Gabrells. Yes, it's a Reeves really? Gabrells signature model. It's the right. second model I think he's done with Reverend. Did and and a band is, Reeves Gabrell played guitar for? Uh, the Cure and Tin Machine. Which you was know David your Bowie. Things. It kind was David of, Bowie. Well uh, done. David Bowie's thing. I miniature applaud you. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and uh, it's so called the dirt bike, allegedly, because um, he liked the simplicity of an old dirt bike that he had, and he liked the simplicity of this old guitar, and so he just thought he'd call it. Reeves also bike. famously used sex aids on his guitar to make Did interesting so, yeah. things so, going across. What kind of thing? Is there, is there a video of that then or something? Like that? How would you even know that? Uh, I was a Reeves Cabral's fan. I was listening, as I do, in, with my pipe and slippers Sundays to Desert Island Discs, and uh, Rick Wakeman was on talking about... Actually, was it? No, I lie. I totally lie. He was on, and he did do some stuff with David Bowie, but it wasn't him. It was John McEnroe, famous tennis player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Who uh, apparently was in a hotel somewhere playing... Um, tennis racket. ...his guitar. No, playing his guitar. Uh, I don't know how well, but playing a, a David Bowie tune when there's a knock at his <coughs> hotel door. And who should it be but David Bowie going, hey, John, would you like to come upstairs? You know, we're having a little party like that. And John Mash goes, oh, yeah, totally. And David Bowie goes, yeah, don't bring the guitar, though. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's the great. massive. Um, <laughs> I thought you, I was waiting for you to go. And he knocked on the door and said, hey, John, you're okay. And he's like, you can't be serious. No, no, no. This, is, this is a true story that you can go and find out on Desert Island Discs, right. too, if you want to. Anyway. As, so, is it as true as the story of a guitar company that decided to do a, a semi-hollow... Through. Is that what? That's not through though, is it? <laughs> oh, I see. You mean as in all the way, as in it's not really semi hollow now. <laughs> it's like a Steve Vai monkey grip, but that you can't put your I mean, hands through, isn't it? I don't, <laughs> I don't approve, personally. It's not, it's not your thing. Well, no, I, <laughs> to say. It's mighty handy if you want I, to be able to stare at someone through your really guitar. It's really handy if you want to grab your hand with tiny fingers. It's obviously not the point, is it? No, it's, just, it's, it's a, a visual thing. thing. It's a visual thing. I mean, it? I get that it's a visual thing. And I, it's I, cool. Let me be honest. I have a small soft spot for Reverend. I, when I saw the Reverend brand, I thought, you know what? Here's a brand that have done something that's kind of old but new. Kind of like the Fender Pawn Shop thing. Exactly. And I, I liked that. And I thought, these guys have got a real shot at being, you know... Respected immediately and and doing good, but I don't I don't. It's like has it got an invisible body that it's hollow too? I don't know what you're What's, being such a why? about it. I like it. Why? Well, it's kind of like a. What? It's got like a Jaguar kind of vibe with like as if it had f holes, but it's not really f holes. They're just drilled all the way through. I, I mean, it's so tough to originate a, a body design now. I isn't mean, look, like, the only person that gets away with f holes that aren't f holes is Paul Gilbert. Uh, or he gets or, away with everything. Or though. Gretsch, or uh, what's his face, the original most famous Gretsch player of all time. That I can't remember his name. Mungo the, Jerry. No, <laughs> him and uh, oh Chet man, Atkins. Chet Atkins. Thank you. I know you were all screaming that he had painted on f holes on his uh, his uh, country gents. Right, but that's Chet Atkins. Yes. I'm sorry, but it's like Santa Claus. Oh. I Jesus. think you're so unkind. I mean, Chet I mean, in a in a modern age where about the most exciting thing we can do is make a strap with a PRS headstock, I think this is just. I mean, I, it's not. We're not innovating here to change the tone of the guitar. Maybe we're just doing something because it's kind of interesting. Maybe I'm just being bad cop for the you day. You are being just, bad just to cop. Be, oh no, I didn't say that the guitar was bad. I just said I'd, 
Anyway, look, it's not your turn yet. It's my turn still. So the Reeves Gabrell's dirt bike is a single pickup. It's the Rail Hammer, um, Wilkinson Trem, Carina body, uh, locking machine heads, and is available in uh, three different colors, I think, Rory, if you wouldn't mind doing some research, popping them on the screen, of which this purple one I thought was the most fetching. Anyway, so with some reverb and chorus, everything on full. Got, uh, if I take the volume down a bit, kind of takes that um, fatness off of, the, off of the humbucker and gives it a little bit of a thinner sound. So like. Uh, and again, if I dial the, the tone control back a little. And then the back control is this control that Reverend put on, I think all their guitars, or if not all of them, certainly most of them, which is that sort of bass roll off. So you can kind of thin the sound out, but, but it's not, it's like a reverse tone control, isn't it? So. See, I think we got the wrong guitars. I, I really you like that. You want that one? Well, we well, should now swap. That I, look, I'm just saying, now that I know that's Reeve Cabral's, it's kind of... I yeah. Guess. Also, is the Railhammer Reverend's own thing? Yes. It's really cool. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's very cool. Um, so these are... Um, I think any single pickup guitar forces you to approach the guitar differently because you've really got to understand how... Or not understand, but you've really got to... If you want the guitar <clears> to sound different, you've really got to to focus on you know your picking style and where you hit the strings and how you you know your vibrato and all that kind of stuff because you've really not got you know you haven't got that comfort zone of being able to go neck pick up bridge pick up you know but yeah. then there are two positive things associated with it mm. number one my friend phil says that if you've got one pickup there's less magnetic pull on the strings That's what so he said stain is better yeah and then uh the other thing he does is put toys in his guitar which is kind of funny yeah. And the other thing is you've got room for your hand to do picky stuff with no pickup in the way. So it's two positive things, which is why I made the hot rod. Well, uh, with some distortion, uh, courtesy of the Nobles uh, ODR1. Sounds good. No, it sounds good. It's cool. It's a you know, it's visually pretty cool, isn't it? It's got that what that sort of uh, Yamaha SG two thousand kind of vibe going on, slightly offset though. Um, it's like I like offset, it. It's like an offset modern SG. It is. It has got that kind of vibe in a great colour. Yeah, so anyway, nice so this is the dirt bike uh, from Reverend uh, Rob. You have got. So I have the Air Sonic. Ooh. They should have called it the Air Plus Plus because it's got two holes where you can. You can blow out through. You mean like one of those comedy detectives from this, like a spy from the 60s that reads read newspapers with like holes cut in the newspapers? Yeah. You could be like this. Can you could be like this, yeah. <laughs> Spying on <laughs> Jeff Beck to get his technique. Um, comes with the Real Hammer Vintage, uh, which sounds great. And it feels good. It took me a while to set it up and get it how I would like it because mm -hmm. they all came with a, a completely flat neck. And I, I prefer a little bit of a bow and then, and then lower the action rather than a flat neck and a high action. But... Um, I've got to ask, actually, is this roasted maple? It is. Because it looks like it is. It is roasted maple. And I'm a big Indeed. fan of the roasted maple, eh? So let's take a listen to a kind of a, a pleasing crunch tone. Mm.
if I didn't know differently, I would say that that switch was wired upside down. Or well, not wired up, but it's twisted round at some point, maybe in transit. Doesn't that downward sound like the neck pickup and upward sound like the bridge pickup? Yeah, I thought that was just the way they did it to be different. Uh, it, I don't know if that's intentional or if that one has just, it's, but there's no, you know, it's effectively that switch you can just loosen and twist it round if you want to, but right. I'm not sure, but it's definitely, well, I kind of like it's either that. a feature or, a, or an error. Sonic. Uh, I'd, I really, think I'd really like to try that. Well, one, you though. try. It. Let's 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 uh, cross the beams. Such a different. different. This has got more of a strap vibe to it, hasn't it? Because of the, the sort of the bare feeling neck, whereas yeah. that's got a little bit more Gibson-y kind of vibe it, it, to it, yeah. hasn't it? Sort of. I quite like it though. I miss the I miss the tremolo arm. <laughs> right. I, I like the the, the 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 sort of the Thunderbird vibe going on here. You know, where it's got the. That's quite unique. Kind of like the fat middle bit, and then the sort of thinner yeah. wings. Can I just have a listen to the the, the tones on this thing mm. though? Kind of unashamedly loud and brash. It's, yeah, and here it's I am. Quite mid-rangey, isn't it? Quite mid-rangey. Anyway, like let's swap guitars. Okay, shall I play the tiny? Um, so, let me tell you about this one, because that's the most interesting one. This is called the Air 12. Um, it's pretty much exactly what well, it says it on, on the tin. has a but for a reason. So this is, this is a 12 string, as you've probably seen. I think your, uh, I think your Z string is slightly flat. <laughs> it is a bugger to tune a 12 string. I'm not even gonna, this, this is close enough. It's kind of got built-in chorus, and the reason, uh, what you then don't want to do, which I was doing before, is actually add chorus. As it's now, like, so this is like a 12-string guitar, which is, has natural chorus in it, if you like, with chorus. Or maybe it works. Two P90s, 
gives it that kind of slightly fatter than they were, you know, if it was single coils, but still gives it that lush acoustic-y kind of vibe. Um, I think, again, it's a Carina body. So it's, it's a set neck now, um, like a glued in neck. Uh, the same controls, so volume tone and then this bass removal sort and of a control. a little goatee beard of a scratch plate. Yeah, a little scratch plate. I mean, I, I must admit, I, I'm digging this. I, I know the 12 string thing, 12, 12 string locking machine, it's on a 12 string, twice the gear ratios. Um, <laughs> I think you could have some fun with this. Do you know so, any John McLaughlin? No, I don't know any John McLaughlin. Um, so this is cool. This is the Air 12, which I like. And Rob... Well, this is... There's a story, isn't there? Well, yeah. That? Now, I know about uh, Smashing Pumpkins and Billy Corbin because... Corgan. Corgan. Corbin? I was doing my Jeremy Corbin. My, yeah, Jeremy, <laughs> Jeremy Corbin. Uh, Billy... Imagine if it wasn't a Billy... <laughs> we'd read that completely wrong. It's Jeremy Corbin, signature guitar. Billy um, Corgan. Billy Corgan. Yes. Um, he, because when I was uh, younger, they were Smashing Pumpkins, my favourite band of all time space. Um, especially Bullet with Butterfly Wings. Come on. Bullet with Butterfly Wings is an incredible song. Um, and apparently, Billy, this is another sig for Billy, and on the back, it's got his signature. I don't know whether it's actually his signature. That would be cool. Does that, does this come on all of them? Uh, I suspect it's just someone at Reverend. Oh, no, let me see. Is it a signature? Let me see. I mean, if it is, I'll just buy it. <laughs> that is his signature, but that looks like it's been screen printed on. <sighs> okay, so it's <laughs> it's a sig for Billy because he does all these interesting high-pitched um, chord progressions and things. And it's tuned G to G, which they call um, Nashville tuning. And uh, so you get this really interesting thing. Now, but it's not for playing like high shreddy lead stuff, which is what my inclination is to do because I'm the high shreddy lead guy. It's uh, for playing chords. It's according to the website, and I'd never heard this before, but you know, going back 100, 200 odd years in the 19th century, uh, there was a type of instrument called a terz, T-E-R-Z, which was effectively a six string guitar uh, or, you know, same intervals as a guitar, but tuned G to G, um, and it would just be used it's to... like a gatook. A gatook, exactly that. A katooka taily. Um, a gandolin. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's listen to it, shall we? A ganjo. <laughs> Guitanjo. Is it the world's most expensive single note capo? I don't know, but it's a lot of fun. And that's what we found. I mean, it's, it's not... It's no cheaper than the actual full bore Billy Corgan, you know, full scale length model. It, it's not designed to be a kid's guitar, don't get that wrong. It is literally... Although a child could buy it and purchase it and yeah, enjoy it. But it's all the full fat goodness of the regular Billy Corgan model, just in a, in a Terz model, Terzler. Very 200 year old early version. Mm. It uh, doesn't require petrol, right. runs do off wish, its own do kinetic wish they energy. not employ this construction method? Well. Wow. I mean, why? it's just, I mean, it's good. Why? That's because that's what you have on like a zillion billion regular guitars. Well, yeah, but these guys, I don't know. I just, why would you do that when you've got this other beautiful, like little tiny beautiful design features like this? Yeah. Which is really cool, really clever. A proper access to the truss rod, baked maple, all these intricate bits, and then they use this heel joint. I'm just saying yeah. my thoughts. No, I mean, it's, it's it is an old you know. fashioned traditional heel well, joint. Maybe that's what else. Billy wanted. Maybe you could just have a little stack of <laughs> things. You know, it seems when you're it hanging just it up, it seems it is. It is. It's silly. dual purpose. It's a guitar, and when you hang it up like that on a hanger back to front, it's a little bookshelf for very small right. books. But all the <laughs> very all small they, elf books. All they had to do was just 
sham for that away and, and, and do it a, recessed, ruined everything there, a recessed bolt on and no, it would have been exactly it. the same but easy to get it. up here for the high shreds <laughs> see if you're sailing the high shreds hang on hang then on you're, you're fine billy billy yes. rob says why didn't you sham for away the heel joint right it doesn't do that oh, okay shreds. right he says when you've sold five million records you can tell him how to build a guitar and, okay uh, i'll go and count my record sales <laughs> and then i'll get back billy sorry, sorry about that I wonder if you can do something. See, now that would have been really clean had there not been <laughs> this. Uh... <laughs> right, what are we ending with, Mr. Chappers? Well, I think we've ended. We've ended. Yes. Have we? Love Billy Corgan, love Smashing Pumpkins, love innovative design changes and the colour purple. And I love the song Wanted on a 12 string. You no longer need to buy a capo. Instead, you can buy this guitar. <laughs> I have been Rob Chapman. And I've been the captain. See you Au later. revoir. Ended. Hey everybody, thanks for watching the Anderton's Guitar YouTube channel. If you're a drummer or a keyboard player or interested in music technology, you might find one of our other channels interesting and I'll put details of those in the description below. If you want to find out more about the products we've just featured, please click here. If you'd like to buy a t-shirt like this, please click here. If you want to watch another video on our guitar channel, click down here. And to subscribe to our guitar channel, click here. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.